Hey everyone, welcome to Mountain Woman Radio. This is episode number 206, and I'm your host, Tammy Treyer. If you are new to my show, my family and I live 100% off-grid in northern Idaho. We've been doing this for a decade, and we live a very traditional, faith-led lifestyle and enjoy sharing our journey and our knowledge with others. And you can find us doing so at treyerwilderness.com. I have, this is part two, I have my mountain man joining me once again. We want to say hello to everybody. Howdy. Howdy, he says. We decided that the first part was rather long and there were a couple things that we um, wanted to, to further share. So we are doing this once again. So. I have a really funny story to share with you guys. <laughs> Shared with you how, you know, with, with Julie giving me the confirmation that he was safe. And, uh, you know, we're spending every day together for almost a month. And really getting to know each other, really enjoying each other's company, really fascinated by each other. And he, he was cute. He was cute. No, you were cute. No, he was cute you. too. No, you were. <laughs> <laughs> he he breaks the news to me that he's heading out to go guide in Wyoming and he may not be back. I'm like, oh my word. There was there was several reasons. I said I might not be back. Okay. Did you want to share and expand um, on that? You know, one was I was thinking about moving back out there. And two... And you were hoping I'd follow you? No. Two was, you know, after Stace, I, I, any time a woman would get mm. start getting close to me, um, I was like, all right, that's it. You're, you're He's done. Gone. I'm gone. I'm out. See you later. You know, it, it was, it was, yeah. Uh, I guess, I guess it's kind of hard for a guy to, guy to say, but uh, I was kind of uh, scared of a woman getting too close to me because I was kind of afraid about things losing them. And uh, so I was like, all right, she started getting too close. That's it. I'm out. And I was thinking about not, you know, moving back out to Wyoming and uh, working on the ranch and stuff like that. And, uh, yeah. Well, <laughs> funny thing is, we talked every night he was gone. And I, you know, I was really frustrated because, you know, I let my guard down. I got hooked and he's gone. And Julie's out in my kitchen. And I'm at my desk. There's a wall between us. And I'm like, this just absolutely sucks. I can't believe that he's gone. And she, and she goes, if it were me, I'd already be out there. And I'm like, oh my gosh. That's all she needed to say. I had just paid off a credit card. And just a little backstory on me. Um, as a kid, I wasn't allowed to start driving until I knew how to change my oil change a tire, take care of my car, and one of my favorite things to do was to get in my car and just go. I had a map in the glove box and I would go and I would get myself to these neat places and then I'd find it on the map and find my way back home. So I loved road trips. So she says this to me. Just paid off the credit card. I found a sitter for Austin uh, for seven days. I booked my flight and I booked my hotel. I knew what town he was in or outside of. So I booked a little <laughs> hotel in the town that I knew it was closest to. And it was all of plane trains and automobiles. I just didn't do the train, but it was planes and automobiles. I got off in Denver from Pennsylvania, got a rental car, got on the road, and I called him. I'm like, where are you at? Now, do you want to share this part? Because that's kind of funny, too. 
Well, it just so happened I was out fixing fence on the ranch I was working on and I was guiding hunts for the guy too. Um, and uh, happened to be one of the only places on the ranch besides at the shop that we had cell service. And uh, yeah, I was like, wow, phone rang. All right. So I picked it up. I'm like, hello? And she said, hey, how you doing? <laughs> I was like, well, I'm doing pretty good. She goes, what are you up to? I'm like, well, I'm fixing fence right now. <coughs> and, and he says, where you at? <laughs> and I said, what are you doing? And she goes, well, I'm on my way to you. And I'm like, yeah, okay, sure you are. <laughs> Whatever. And, uh, and Julie was at home cheering me on. <laughs> and uh, she, uh, she goes, yeah, I'm, up. I'm all the way up to you. Just got off my and plane I'm, in Denver and I'm, and I'm on. on. And I was like, yeah, okay, sure you are. Whatever. You know, I was like, no, no, she's not. <laughs> and uh, so she told me where she was. And I'm like, oh, wow. Okay. <laughs> she is really on her way up here. She ain't lying. Because, you know, I knew where she was there. And, uh, yeah. I was never there before, so he knew. Yeah, so we planned a spot to meet. and I rode, rode my horse out. And got the truck to come out and met her. Sure enough, there I was. And there she was, yep. <laughs> oh, and it was it was such a cool trip because you know, he was out there to guide hunts, but there was a law between then and when I got there and when your first hunt started. So he actually had all that time off. I was I what I'd do is I'd um I'd guide hunts and then in between the hunts, uh, I'd work on the ranch, um, for extra pay, just moving cows around and checking fence and stuff like that. So uh, I had a I had a, a window in between the yep. my first hunt, like she said, about a week there, and uh, it was I so could cool. you know I, I was just planning on working on the ranch, but I didn't have to. It wasn't like I had to, and uh, ended up. <laughs> I hijacked him. Yeah. It was so cool though. I um I ended up getting two web clients while I was there, um so it was a business trip also, but we went hiking and got to see some of the most amazing places. And for the <laughs> I have to share another story then. I'm gonna go back to a heart story in a second, but um the other thing was my sister was lives in Colorado and I hadn't seen her for nine years or I had she'd been out there for nine years I'd never gone out to see her place and um, we ended up going down there and visiting her and did a lot of hiking and just had a really good time and and I, I secured that he was coming home yes <laughs> but funny story when I got out of the car for the first time in it was in Medicine Bow, at the top of the mountain there. Mm -hmm. I stepped out and there was a little tiny white heart-shaped rock the size of the tip of my pinky, right at my foot. So, of course I picked that one up. But then we went hiking for the first time and um, got out of the car and there is this, it's probably about that big of a heart, right outside the door at my foot so of course I snagged that one too and then at the top of the mountain um, you were standing there and moved your foot and there was that heart-shaped rock underneath it so for those of you that know me well you know that I see hearts everywhere a frothy heart in a mud puddle coffee creamer in my coffee cup in the clouds you name it I see hearts so it was really pretty cool and what was funny is when I left um, to fly back I had everything packed up and had that rock in my luggage and the lady um, at the checkout counter if you're familiar with Monsters Incorporated when the lady says I need your time card or your time sheet or whatever she asked for that's exactly what this lady was like it was so funny and I don't contain myself well when I find things humorous and 
She's like, your bag's over by five pounds. And I knew exactly why. So I grabbed the rock out and I set it on the counter and she, she pushed the bag through. But she proceeded to scold me and tell me that I could not carry that rock onto the airplane in my hand, that it had to be secured in something and it wouldn't fit in the other bag I had. And she said I could go down to the UPS or the post office in the airport and send it to myself or I could get, I could get another luggage and put it in there. I spent 90 bucks. I know. I wouldn't do that today, but I did spend 90 bucks. Yeah. And I brought, and, and it's fine, we've, that we've almost rolled the wheels off of that suitcase because that's the one Austin's been using, that black one. But um, I put my carry-on in there, and it was small enough that I could use it as a carry-on and put my rock in there, but it was really funny. I couldn't help but laugh at that woman. She was just, she was very negative and, and just, but I, I'm like, I was, I was too high in the clouds at that point. But it was, it was just really awesome. And Julie was our biggest cheerleader. Yeah. yeah. She really was. She still is today. She's just an awesome, awesome lady. And uh, I miss her greatly. But she was such a uh, huge asset to our relationship. Were you going to say something? No. Oh, okay. You look like you were pondering. So, yeah, so that was kind of a funny story. And just that, uh, that was my ultimate road trip. And, you know... I, I truly felt God, you know, God put us together, and I wasn't, I wasn't letting him get away. <laughs> and after that encounter with Craig, we, we dated for almost a year. We met in August, and um, January of the following year, we decided we were going to, well, actually, no, it was over a year because we didn't come out. So it was over a year that we dated and that. But uh, he had always said to his parents that if he was not married by 30, that he was going to be single and a mountain man and live in the, in the wilderness by himself for the rest of his life. I was going <laughs> to, I was going to take and probably work on a ranch or so mm. buy me a horse trailer live in the horse trailer get a couple horses and a couple mules and just live changed all that yeah you did bam <laughs> yes you did you changed every little last one of them <laughs> ideas but you are in the wilderness yeah and you still get to watch your top knot yeah and we do it together. Mm -hmm. And we're very fortunate that way because there's not too many people that can be together 24-7 and still like each other. And I yeah. love you. <laughs> well, that's good. I'm glad. But we do. We have a good time. But January of 2010, we actually came out here to Idaho. And we looked in the area, looked at another parcel but we really didn't have much to look at and that was not at all what we were looking for. And we headed back home. Well, it was kind of a nice spot and everything, but they wanted way too much for it. There was a lot of work needed to be done and they wanted way too much money for it and they wouldn't come down in their price, so. Yeah, and the water was an issue and the septic was an issue. So, I mean, all that could have been resolved, price being right, but it just didn't feel right. So we went back to Pennsylvania and, uh, well, before we went back to Pennsylvania, um, we were hiking up a mountainside one day, and I could not for the life of me figure out why he was grumbling so much. He was just fit to be tied. He was grumbling and carrying on, and I couldn't figure it out. So we stopped, and we took a break, and he sat down on the stump, and he told me to sit on his lap, except I sat on the wrong side. <laughs> We had to do a little shuffle and then uh, he proposed to me on a mountainside here in Idaho and uh, got me a ring with hearts on it. What a guy. I think I saw hearts. The funny thing is the reason he was getting so frustrated while we were hiking up the mountainside is because he couldn't find the perfect place to propose and it was just frustrating him. And 
Then we headed back to Pennsylvania. And we decided if we were going to look some more at different properties. And we were looking and found a realtor out here that was selling a parcel that he said would take special people to live here. That sort of made our eyes brighten a little bit because we felt we were the special people and, and felt really right and uh, ended up purchasing this sight unseen from Pennsylvania and uh, did all our homework, made sure we had all the legal easements right away and did a lot of homework on the direct area, did a lot of Google earthing and did a lot of preparing and at the same time because we were engaged and we purchased the property, uh, we decided that we would get married and we chose the perfect day. <laughs> I think his parents were starting to get a little nervous because I married him April 4th of 2010, it was Easter Sunday, and it happened to be his 30th birthday. <laughs> Nothing. She just got me. <laughs> Had a couple hours to spare because we had a midday wedding. Mm -hmm. Austin was our best man and he took that job very seriously and was very nervous. He almost marched me right past you. That was very funny. He about walked right out into the cornfield. He did. He yeah, did. We, got, we had we, a backtrack. <laughs> we got married there at my, parent, at my parents' place on the farm. and. Uh, so, yeah, he just, he about walked her right out into the cornfield. Like, Whoa, that come back here. so funny. He was, he was nervous, and, but he was so excited. And, you know, we, we did a, just a family gathering for our very immediate family gathering for our wedding because to enable us to embark on a 2,500-mile journey out here and to uh, live an off-grid lifestyle, we needed everything we had to make that happen. As well as selling things, I, I sold my truck and my Harley and my boat and a bunch of other stuff that enabled us to have excess cash to be able to do what we needed to do. And uh, it was just, it was funny, you know, and we knew that we, we probably upset people by limiting it that way, but we had a big party. Do you remember what the invitation said? Bring your, or bring your horseshoes, guns, horseshoes, and hand grenades, and come join us for a good time. That's what it was, yeah. That was very fitting for us. <laughs> and we had a very wonderful turnout, wonderful group of people come to love on us that day and also to see us off because we had things packed up. We were ready, we were ready to go. And uh, we ended up having almost a month long hold in Pennsylvania um, due to Austin's biological father. So we had to wait, but we were all packed up. U-Haul was full and, and we were ready. So it would have been like I don't remember, I think like seven days after we were married that we would have been leaving. It was very fast. Mm -hmm. It was like right after, it was supposed to, actually that's what it was, it was supposed to be right after our party. We were going to pull out. Mm -hmm. So we ended up having to stay a little longer, but made it out here. And uh, this lifestyle is just so amazing. I can personally never go back. I, I cannot live on the grid. I cannot go back to... Um, house upon house upon house in town it's just not possible now that we've lived this lifestyle and I grew up on a farm um, as he did uh, just I was further south in Pennsylvania by two hours and uh, I think we both had that moment in time where we decided you know I don't want to do this farm thing anymore I want to venture and I don't want to be in the valley anymore I want to venture out and see the world and he did that a lot bigger or greater than I did. I um, started programming right out of high school and ended up working outside of Philadelphia and had a career and then became a mom. And, uh, but it's just funny how our roots kept calling us back. You know, we wanted that wholesome life 
away from the cities, away from the crazy stuff, and and just took it a step further to stepping out here into the wilderness. And then moving forward, the only direction we can go is forward, and we're faithfully doing that, and we are stepping deeper into the wilderness. Lord willing. Lord willing. We are seeking Him for that, and... Uh, been an amazing ride you guys have heard me share different stories there's so many other <laughs> different things we could share of how God has just incredibly incredibly had his hand on us I, this is something that was really crazy Julie got to watch my office person who gave me that confirmation that he was safe just sat there in awe as did your mom at how the doors just kept blowing open, wide open for us to embark uh, on a life in Idaho as well as living off the grid. It was just, it was insane. I think <coughs> a lot of, not every time, but a lot of times, um, if, you're, if you're in God's will, the doors will open. You know, maybe not to the extent that they did for us, when we came out, yeah. you know, because you're always going to have problems. You're always oh, yeah. going to have situations and stuff that come up. But uh, if you're in God's will and you do what he wants, um, things, things will line out. Things will work out. Um, if, you're, if you want them to work out according to his plan and his will. Yeah, got to seek him. And, and we were a perfect example of although our connection was amazing and everything went well and the doors open, on our way out here, uh, four of the injectors went on our truck and we got stranded an hour, hour there and a was, half from, from here. There was a bunch of stuff that happened that, I mean, that God just had his hand on oh us. Oh my gosh. I mean, just, just. Close accidents. The um, one, the, tire. the one time, wow. the tire on the um, it was on the truck, wasn't it? Yeah. Yeah, it was on, yeah. on the truck. This is crazy. Um, you we didn't... were we were going down through a uh, construction zone, yeah. and there was uh, the cement barriers on either side, so it's just one lane going down through there. And he's and we're the middle it. middle of the construction work, which was several miles. Yeah, it was long. It was quite a few miles long, <laughs> uh, just these solid <coughs> concrete barriers. And I was pulling the 24-foot 24, 24 gooseneck trailer um, that was loaded down heavy. Mm -hmm. um, and I had a 26-foot U-Haul right behind him. And uh, I hit something. I, to this day, I have no clue what I hit. But and the way he I, knew he hit it is it hit me. I, I heard. Well, I heard it. Did you? Thump. Had you heard it? Yeah, I heard it thump, and um, it, something wasn't right. So I was like, well, when I get a chance and get out of this construction, I'll pull over. Um, this was we insane. went. I don't know how many miles we went. Three to five. I mean, yeah, it, it was, was long. It was far, and then we got down. Ramp. to uh, an on-ramp for uh, an exit and I pulled off and as soon as I got off the road and stopped the tire went flat it was and there was lane. there was a section on the side of the the sidewall um, <laughs> that was probably oh, I don't know 12 inches 10 12 inches um, and it was it was tore completely off it's like there's strings and stuff in the um, in the tires, and you could see all that stuff. So I mean, God, God had His hand on on us there. We just stopped and prayed. Had, had I broke it. down in the middle of that construction zone, you know, that that would have oh man, that'd have been terrible. Wow. But um, you know, it was that, and then we got out here a little start. Got that taken care of and got out a little bit further. Mm -hmm. And then the injectors started going. And I, uh, we stopped. Mm 
-hmm. and my cousin was along and uh, said, well, let's pray over the truck. So we, uh, we prayed and we ended up getting, oh, it was a long, long ways. It was. To where we got to a, a car dealership. Yeah, because weren't we and just past Missoula when that happened? And I then we went from Missoula it to was, Kellogg, so it, it was, was like It was long. far. And it was a lot of huge mountains, that we, passes that we had to to cover. And he was blowing, billowing black smoke. Yeah, it was. Before we prayed. Before we prayed, he was just billowing black smoke. And we got back on the highway, and it was still black smoke, but it wasn't like it was. Yeah. And we just nursed just it. Just nursed, took my time, and yeah. just, we got through, and then... We got to the dealership and um, it was like, I had them check it out and they're like, yeah, the injectors are shot. And it's like, man, what are we gonna do? We had to get the U-Haul back. My cousin was gonna be, he was coming out to help us start building. <laughs> and we ended up sitting there in a motel for a couple of days. Three days, yeah. yeah and then um, ended up buying a whole new truck so new to us new to, it wasn't brand new but yeah. it was it was a new to us truck um and because their loaner trucks didn't have a uh fifth fifth, uh, fifth, fifth wheel, wheel hitch and the trailer that he was pulling had everything in we needed to set up camp here the u-haul just had stuff that was going into storage we intentionally packed you know, knowing our needs and the wall tent and everything all my, all my was tools to all build your tools, and everything, everything was, was on um, that trailer. So we couldn't leave the trailer. We could leave the truck, but we couldn't leave the trailer. And we had to get his cousin back to the airport because our three days there blew it for him to really help us a whole lot. We got settled in, but so that's why we had bought the truck, uh, you know, intention to later sell it, which we did. But it it got us here, and then we and then we came down the lane and had to have the realtors bring us out here because we didn't even know how to get here. And we were like kids in a candy store just running around. I mean, it was total overgrown, nasty wilderness that most people would look at and not see the potential in. And we were just nuts because we knew we both have an eye for that. Him especially so in the landscaping aspect of it. But we... We lived in a wall tent for eight and a half months while we built our homestead here, and that was the absolute best time of my life. It was just so simple. We each had a Rubbermaid tote that probably wasn't much bigger than this, you know, with our clothes and our personal effects in it, and I had my laptop and my office equipment in a tote with grommets so I could have the cables coming out and have things plugged into the generator or the truck. And the three of us slept in this wall tent. It was eight feet by 14 feet, and we had two dogs, yeah, three tents. Oh, and a hamster. And the hamster. <laughs> that was funny. The tent, the wall tent, it was, oh. originally it was a lot, a lot bigger. It was a, it was a big, it was 18 by 30, 20, oh. 25, oh. 25 or 30 feet. Um, it was one of the tents that we had when I was guiding pack trips, running pack trips back into the back country down in Wyoming. And uh, it had, the one night it caught fire. And um, so about half of it had burnt. And my boss said, if you want it, you can have it. So I was like, yeah, sure. So I took it into town, into Cody. And um, there's a business there called uh, Buck, Stitch, Buck Stitch Canvas. And uh, I took it into them and they sewed a new, had to cut a bunch of it out and then they sewed a new back in, put a stove jack in and stuff and, and uh, so I had, I paid, I don't know, like 150 bucks for them to do that and I had a, I had a new tent pretty much. And so. it was the best home ever. I, there was just something so simplistic and romantic about that to me. It was like the grandest adventure for me, waking up every morning with dirt under my feet and you know, we'd have grouse and deer right outside the flap of the tent and coyotes howling us to sleep at night. And it was just, it was awesome. It was absolutely awesome. And you know, our, our presence today <clears throat> is a result 
of me creating a website to keep our family back home aware of our happenings and to know that we were still alive and hadn't been eaten by wolves and bears and lions and tigers. tigers. Oh my. my. Yes. And what happened is we were doing the, the blog and started doing some YouTube videos so people could see our progress and other people just happened to find it and here we are today. So that is our story and it is a great passion to not only share our story but to share our faith and our journey because God does amazing things and can bring beauty from the ashes in so many, so, so many ways. It didn't take long for me to chip away at his brick and mortar walls that he had put up and it didn't take me long to realize that I had found myself a prize and a keeper. Boy, she's blowing smoke now. <laughs> Lift your feet. <laughs> it's getting deep in here. No, for real though, you know, I just feel tremendously blessed in my life, you know, even, even through the hard times, you know, even more so through the hard times because, you know, God takes that time to really grow us, stretch us, build us. Yeah, I mean, we've come a long way. Mm -hmm. um, and don't, don't think that it was uh, all roses and posies. <laughs> um, the, all the time in our marriage, um, there was some pretty rough times, um, but God, God was there, and uh, I, I, I always had it in my mind, and I really give it to my parents for raising me that way. But when I said I do. I meant that, you know, forever. So, um, there was no, there was no thinking of, Any other of divorcing and, and stuff. And, um, you know, like I said, there's been hard times. Um, I think anytime you live with anybody for, or around anybody for any length of time, um, you're going to have disagreements and you're going to have arguments and you're going to have problems Tussles. but it's just coming out of them and growing stronger and being being willing to stick things out and, and stand on God's promises that he'll be there for you and there's so there's so much to be said about being in a relationship where you have that rock solid oath and you know that regardless how rough it might get and what you might have to walk through that you don't ever have to worry about somebody leaving. I've experienced that already and what he offers me in that and it is reciprocal because I took it very seriously too, just ended up in unfortunate circumstances. You know, so when I said I do to him too, it was forever and, and that was both of our intentions. So to have that comfort and that security of knowing that even though we might not like each other one day, we are just, still in it till the end. And just because you might not like somebody <laughs> for the moment, right, doesn't mean you don't love them. Right, exactly. And doesn't mean that you know you don't care for them. Right. We're you know in today's society when stuff like that does happen, I think that's commonly felt. And, and because marriage and relationships and pretty much everything is throw away in our society today, you know, it's hard. And I'm grateful that we have that promise to one another and that it is solid and we know that. And, and that helps a lot in, in working to be better selves, you know, a, me being a better person tomorrow than I was today and and growing in, in Christ because he's constantly growing us and building us and strengthening us and creating us anew because he's got plans, amazing plans for each of us and it's pretty awesome. I mean, we've both grown so much on this journey. It's incredible. Mm -hmm. So incredible. And 
like we said, Lord willing, uh, we'll have another major journey to record and and to share with people. Couple actually. Um, it's something that's uh, one of the major ones. Is something that I've uh, pretty much dreamed of um, ever since I was pretty much little like 10 years old, 8, 10 years old, you know, ever since I was real little. Um, it's something I've always wanted to do. So, Lord willing, um, that's what we'll be, uh, we'll be embarking on that adventure. and uh, Sharing it with you guys. Yeah. And we'll be building a new uh, off-grid homestead in spring. Yeah, Lord willing, yeah. and we got to, you know, uh, we're just praying God sends the right people and the right uh, family for this uh, for this home, yep. and uh, they can take it over and enjoy it and enjoy the the area here. And the labors of our love, and and we'll start again and start from the bottom up, and you know. In saying all that we have about our walk, you know, I always say to you when you're working on a project and things constantly break and that you're working, we do so much more in a day oftentimes than the average person does just because of how we live and what we do. We live very traditionally. And the same applies to us, you know, in our relationship that, you know, our rough spots are a result too of us growing but also being around each other 24/7 and building for the most part yeah yeah and building a life like this and I wouldn't trade it for anything I love I love the securities of our life the freedoms of our life but the comforts of my home and my family those my family God and my family are my two greatest gifts in life and I'm I'm I just feel, you know, even though we've gone through some pretty rough stuff and with my healing journey, <coughs> I feel like the most blessed woman on this planet. And it's because of perspective and, and our love for God mm -hmm. that we are able to, you know, see things in, in a different light than most people too. Much greater positive outlook on life. and. Just because we're also looking up and forward. Yeah. So do you have anything else to share about our story? Oh, I could sit here all night and tell stuff about us and Austin. Every everything we've been we've both been through and but that's kind of all of it in a nutshell. Yeah. Kind of. This is a short story. Short yeah. version. <laughs> Maybe we'll maybe we'll add a little story here and there as we go through the year. Something how God touched us and work miracles in our lives here. But that is our story. We're and, sticking to it. And we are. And we're we're living it out and we're hanging on for the ride. Keep your hands and your feet in the ride at all times and hold on tight. And we're going to take you on that journey. So you best be hanging on because what's ahead is going to be really, really awesome. Right? Yep. Yep. So now that you've heard our story, even in the mini version, it took two parts. <laughs> but that's, I'm really glad. That's not all of it. I know. It's so crazy. We, we have, there's just so much we could tell you. And we'll, like I said, we will continue to share little snippets and tidbits of our further story and the way God has blessed us in upcoming episodes and, and share those moments with you because really God has just done tremendous things in our lives and in Austin's life and it's just been really, really amazing. So thank you again for joining us on this episode. If you are looking to find the um, show notes and, and it archived on our website, you can go to treyerwilderness.com slash podcast 
2-206. As you will uh, hear us sharing about why we embarked on this uh, off-grid lifestyle. So stay tuned for that also because I think it's important information for people to understand um, why and what we've gained from it. Uh, there's a lot of misconceptions on off-grid living. So anyway, thank you again for joining us. Um, give it a thumbs up, a like, a review, a comment, depending on where you're listening. But thanks again for joining us. You guys take care. Until the next one, God bless. God bless you.